Hi, this video is a basic primer on the prior art module. I'm just going to touch on some of the features of it, and there's additional articles and topics that uh, go into more details. But basically, from the prior art screen module, uh, you've got a list of all your patent matters, U.S., foreign, PCT. Uh, they'll automatically show up in here based on the attorney ref value. And then if it's uh, got an application number, that'll show up as well. And we've got a couple columns here. We have ref count, which is the number of references associated with a matter. And they could have gotten there um, in a number of different ways. They could have been imported in. They could have, somebody could have manually linked certain references to a matter. Um, but basically, there's 14 references in this example, which I'm going to click on the page, uh, associated with this matter. Since there's no cite date or cited by, AppCall considers them as not having been cited in any kind of a way. And then if we look over at the cite column for the same matter, we've got a zero, which is letting you know none of these references have been cited. Once an IDS is filed, it would update, I'm sorry, update this count and, and, and add an IDS count value of one in here. So it's a snapshot of looking at what matters have what references associated, how many have been cited in IDSs. Now, you've got a couple different options here. If you want to add art, uh, there's specific articles on how that's done, but you can easily um, add references to a matter. Uh, you can also cross-site, so perhaps you file a new continuation. You can check that matter, click cross-site, and that's going to bring any other references associated with the family into the new continuation. Uh, if you open up a matter to their prior art screen, um, again, you can manually, maybe you want to mark some of these as having been cited. You can check some of them, click set citation status, and you can say, yeah, these were previously cited. Maybe they weren't done in app call and put in a date and that'll show up as uh, having been cited. Or maybe you don't need to cite them but you still want them to be associated with the matter, or maybe they were cited by the examiner. Uh, you've got a number of different options for setting things that maybe don't need to be cited. Uh, you could also um, link refs to different matters. So maybe you want these references linked to another matter. You can click link refs. You can go search for a matter, um, put in the value, and then uh, decide what kind of citation status. Uh, you also have the option, of course, of creating an IDS. So when you're in this screen, you can just click Create IDS. And that's going to give you the option to generate an IDS. We'll populate the full SB08 with all the details in it and uh, avoid you from filling that out manually. Uh, other things you can do is uh, you, there's now a new option to load refs from a SpaceNet. <clears throat> so before, there wasn't a way to easily bring in prior art for a, um, either an issued or even a pending matter. It was kind of something that needed to be done um, in a manual process. But now you can use load refs from a SpaceNet button, and we will query a SpaceNet, the EPO's database, and bring over any references uh, that are been filed in an IDS. Kind of a nice new feature. Uh, so that's just a kind of a quick primer on how this module works. And again, there'll be additional articles and videos and even an a webinar that we've run about every six weeks covering this module in full. Thank you.